Hi guys, I'm here with Victoria. I wasn't gonna film, but then I thought, you know what? I wanna show you what's going on because this is a learning experience for everybody and Parrot Playhouse is about taking you on our journey of what life is like behind the scenes with parrots. So Victoria has been shivering. Um, she's been in a corner and she's fluffed. Her eyes don't look great. I am concerned and so I made an appointment at her veterinarian's office and they're slammed but they're gonna get us in at three o'clock this afternoon. They First it was 4.30 and then they just called and they had a cancellation so they're trying to get us in as soon as possible. Um, so a couple of things have been going on this week with her and it's nesting season for cockatoos so they become hormonal and they wanna nest and so this is the time where if you have anything that encourages nesting behavior, you do not want it in the cage such as boxes or anything that makes a bird want to regurgitate or get hormonal. So what's going on with Victoria is her poops have had a little bit of yellow in them, um, which really concerns me. She's been fluffed. She is eating. She is pooping. She is drinking water. But the big issue right now is she had a hysterectomy uh, last year. And the hysterectomy removed her uterus, but it did not remove her ovaries, which you cannot remove um, with birds because there's too many blood vessels and they'll bleed to death. And I'm sorry, I know this is a bad shot, but I'm trying not to disturb Victoria right now. Um, so what can happen is she can still produce egg yolk. And if she does do that, then it's gonna fall into her belly, causing a massive infection, and it can be very deadly. So this is why I have to be so, so cautious with her to like, if there's, I can't have any boxes, I can't let her make tents. I can't let her go into corners. Like she likes to go into Maui's corner. As you've seen in some of my live videos where I'll, if I see that, I'll take her out of there. And so like Maui's corner right there. So, um, I'm, I just have to really be on it. But right now, I am going to be bringing you guys somewhat along when we get to the appointment. So I'll do my best. All right, I'm going to let her rest. And then we'll be back. Okay, so it is time to take Victoria to the vet. I had a traveling carrier for her that was big, and she chewed through it. So I'm going to see if she fits into this one. Okay, let's see. Can you go in there? Okay, let's see. Does she fit in there okay? Yep. Just really worried about her. So, there she is. So I'm gonna put some food and water in there and we're gonna go. Okay, so we're at the vet. I'm getting ready to go in. There she is. And she's scared, but she's gonna be okay. Yeah, she survived the car ride. She's probably a little nauseous, but she's doing good. Okay, so she's scared. It's okay, Victoria. It's okay. So we just weighed her. Dr. Lotus. So Dr. Lotus was just in, examined her and said she had lipstick all over her head. Oh my goodness. But she is losing weight. So she has been watching it. She's been losing some weight and she's definitely hormonal and um, he is going to do an implant. So he's going to give her some anesthesia. They're getting the room ready right now and they're going to do the implant they did it on one side of the chest that he looks, so he's gonna do it on the other side of the chest. And he really feels that's the best option for her right now. But besides that, everything else looks really, really good on her. Like her tummy doesn't feel like there's any inflammation in there. She looks really healthy, she's strong. And so she looks really good, he thinks, yeah. Yeah, he's very happy and she's just really scared right now. So the implant is huge, you guys. It's really huge. And so if you ever take your birds into the vet and they need to get a hormonal implant, always, always 
ask your veterinarian to sedate them. Like Dr. Laus is like, it is massive. He doesn't like to do this unless they are sedated. So the sedation is for her comfort and her safety. Like the other day when I was having my finger, when I injured it, I had to have this lidocaine shot. And the doctor was like, it's gonna hurt really bad. And it was a really thick shot and they had to do a nerve block. And it was so painful. Like he told me it was gonna be probably one of the worst things I felt. And I was like, ah, it's not gonna be that bad. But I guess the position where it went, oh my God. So I don't want Victoria to feel pain like that. So she's gonna go under and while she's under, we're gonna take advantage of it. Look at, look what she's doing to my hand. She's so nervous. Look at her nails going in. So he's gonna trim her nails too while she's out and uh, she needs that. And um, yeah, so it's always scary when birds go under anesthesia, but Dr. Loudis is definitely one of the best and she's gonna do just fine and then once I take her home I'm gonna give her some loxicam which is an anti-inflammatory and it also helps with pain and during this time when she's ovulating is what's happening her ovaries are enlarged they're hurting her and so I'm gonna give her some loxicam to help with the pain of that and also the implant and there he is I have it face towards me. Don't worry, you're off camera. He doesn't like to be on camera. So we're there. Doing? Here, there they go. I'm going off to a trip. <laughs> I'll be Bye. back in 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. Laz. Bye, Victoria. There she goes. Okay, so now we wait. We wait, we wait. But um, this is something that is like you know, hormones and cockatoos, it's a big deal, you guys. And this is why I am not a fan of cockatoos and boxes or just birds playing with boxes in general because especially certain times of year, boxes make them want to make nests. And in captivity, parrots, most parrots are not flying. They're not as active as they should be, and so they don't have the breast muscles, they don't have the muscles that they need to, if they do produce an egg, to push that egg out. And there are a lot of captive birds that are lacking in certain vitamins and calcium that they need to make those eggs hard. So this is something, if you have a captive parrot, you really want to avoid. Um, you wanna avoid hormones, you wanna make sure that they're getting 10 to 12 hours of sleep every night, and that's uninterrupted sleep. You wanna make sure that the fat in their diet is kept minimal. More fat means there is plenty of food and they wanna make babies and produce. So you wanna be really careful. You wanna weigh them constantly. That way you know if all of a sudden you see like a drastic weight increase, you know like, oh my goodness, something's going on or, a your weight decrease you're like what what is happening to my bird but a major increase can mean that there's an egg in there and especially cockatoos cockatiels i've been seeing sun conures I'm trying to hear if i hear her screaming i don't think so um i've been watching it on facebook and social media and those guys get into trouble a lot with being egg bound or you know having to lay which just creates all kinds of problem and prolapses when basically their insides start coming out of their bottom. So you just want to avoid all this. And with Victoria, she does get hormonal if I have her cage, you know, by the wall because then she feels like she has like a corner to get all like, <laughs> you know. So I kind of put her cage away from the wall when she goes to sleep. I do not cover her cage this time of year, but I make sure she has a plenty of warmth. I do not want her to become hormonal, which has happened anyways. This is me um, knowing what to do and doing my best to avoid it, but it still happens. So uh, you guys just gotta really be careful and I can't emphasize enough to keep the boxes away from your birds, you know, especially certain times of year. But with cockatoos, I say never give a cockatoo a box unless you want all kinds of problems, like behavior problems. We're talking aggression, you know, biting, screaming, um, egg laying, 
egg bound. I mean, basically they're trying to protect their nest. And so you don't want to give that to them to encourage this behavior because this behavior can kill a bird. The hormones can kill a bird. And if Victoria wasn't here today, if I just didn't pay attention to the signs that she was giving to me, she could have very well produced egg yolk and that egg yolk could have gone into her belly and that egg yolk in her belly could have rotted, could have created all kinds of bacteria killing Victoria or making her really, really sick. But this is what it is, you guys. This is like the real thing and I'm taking you and along this ride and this journey and it's no joke. And this is a bird that was not she given really anything to make her want to create, you know, go into this hormone behavior, but it's basically mother nature and it's, you know, this time of year, it does it. So um, if I was to like cuddle her and like wrap her in towels, give her boxes, this would be a really horrific situation for Victoria. So um, I just think, you know, you always have to be alert and if you want something to cuddle, if you want something to pet, don't get a parrot because they're not designed for that. They're not made for petting, they're not made for cuddling. And I know Victoria looks so cuddly and stuff and I do put up stuff going, oh, she's so cuddly, but really honestly, I touch her head, I will hold her, I'll put her against me, but I never touch under her belly, I never touch her back. I'm just really careful, you know, and maybe I do and I slip, but I'm really trying to be aware of how I'm touching her, how I'm interacting with her, because it doesn't take much to make her hormones go crazy. And um, it's just, this is this is serious business. So let's just wait, let's wait for Victoria to come out. She's gonna be a little droggy and um, I'm just gonna sit here and uh, I'm just gonna think about her and think positive thoughts that she's in really good hands. I hear her screaming. When she wakes up from anesthesia, she gets scared and that's the only time I hear her ever scream. Is when they're waking up, waking her up from anesthesia. It's scary and I'm sure she's confused, but that's like the only time I hear her scream. It's just so weird. But at least we know she's waking up, so that's good. Back. When I get nervous, I break out in a rash. So I guess I am a little nervous about Victoria because um, <laughs> I broke out in hives. Oh my gosh. I seriously have hives all over me. They're like on my stomach. Oh yeah. <laughs> I guess I am a little nervous right now. Okay, there she is. Oh, there she goes, getting all hormonally. So she's gonna get a sh some meloxicam tonight for inflammation. Thank you, Dr. Loudis. Wow. I'll see you later. So she's gonna meloxicam, and then it's gonna be kind of painful where he did the injection. But then he also, I think he glued it, because the injection's really big, so they have to glue the little spot that opens. And, but she will be in a little pain tonight, but it won't be bad. And right now, that is what we do not wanna hear, the hormones. But we're gonna stop that so it'll kick in it'll kick in in like a week and so we got the syringes and we are ready to go yeah she did good she screams for like a few seconds and then she's just like oh i know where i'm at i'm gonna go back to being a mute cockatoo victoria this is what you got this is the only time you get to be in the towel when you're coming out of anesthesia this is it Towel's going. This side. Oh, I don't want. She's coming out of anesthesia. I want to be really careful. I don't know if you can see right there. See that? That's where he went in. Gave her the injection. So she's kind of out of it, but she's doing really good. You see, you guys, anesthesia is amazing if done properly. So don't fear it. If it's given by a good veterinarian and if the bird's in good conditions it's gonna be okay so look at her this is the bird that just went under you see that see her little thing she's doing good so don't don't fear your veterinarians don't fear it a good veterinarian is gonna 
take good care of your bird. And we're gonna get her in there. And it's just about you catching the illness in time or whatever's going on. If you let your birds, oh, oh gosh. If you let your birds go too long, then yeah, they're gonna get sick. So, all right. Okay, so we're home. It was a really rough drive. We were in traffic for about an hour and 20 minutes and she threw up probably the entire way. So I just gave her some meloxicam for the pain and Dr. Lada said just basically just get her to eat and we want to get some weight on her and he was just like, give her what she wants at this point. And so what I did was uh, some almond butter toast so you can see there and I gave it to her right after I gave her the Meloxicam. I don't want to disturb her but there she is and so she's going to be in a little pain because the implant that they put in is really big but as you can see she's just relaxed and she has food in her bowl I don't know if you can see that so I also steamed some corn and quinoa and veggies and she really wasn't that interested in it so um I just I was like just get some toast some gluten-free bread and some almond butter and let's just do this because I just want her to eat tonight and she was kind of like picking at her um feathers so I don't know if like the anesthesia or whatever, like made her itch or something, or it's just from like, she's just nervous being touched. So I was like, let's just get her beak busy. And I look horrible right now. Like, ugh. I like have hives, you guys. <laughs> when she had her hysterectomy, I had hives for two months. <laughs> I was so stressed. So, all right, so that's the end of this video. Um, but we're back home, as you can see, and I'm feeding the birds and what? What's going on there? He's trying to feed himself, but I offered him food in his cage and he didn't want it, so I'm gonna give it another try. So he wants to eat it, like go on there and steal food because that's what he does. But we're gonna end it. And we love you guys. And she's home. She looks good. And I'm just gonna keep a close eye on her. I have the heat up, so I'm gonna make sure she gets plenty of heat tonight and water. I'll wake up like at the middle of the night a couple times throughout the night to make sure she's hydrated and offer her food if she wants anything. So I'm just going to baby her to death tonight and I usually do but I'm going to take it to the next level. We're going to take it to a 10. So um, oh, my finger looks weird doesn't it? I have like this plastic thing protecting it from this, the stitches under there. <laughs> Anyways so there she is, and we love you guys, and Maui wants her food. Bye.